Thank you guys for joining back to the Live My Podcast. Uh, there's a couple things that I wanted uh, Zach and I to announce before we um, go. He to forced the... me to do this. He always does this. He <laughs> to the C force. To do. There you go. Do. I know you're gonna listen, and like you always do. <laughs> but so before the C force cinema episode, we wanted to make a couple announcements um, to uh, for future guests that are gonna be up and coming on the podcast. Uh, and I want you to make sure you guys subscribe, um, follow us on Twitter at the Limelight underscore Pod, uh, Limelight Podcast on YouTube. Uh, Instagram, Limelight Podcast, every streaming and platform. Facebook, Limelight Podcast. So basically, we're going to give you guys a rundown of who's coming up on the show just to make sure that uh, to hit the bell notification. That way, you would get the episode as soon as uploaded either on Wednesday or Friday. George, they, know, they know how it works. I don't think they do. That's why we're don't telling. talk down to these people. <laughs> I just want to inform the public <laughs> for that matter. If you guys didn't know I love YouTube them. exists, and if you press buttons on the YouTube, it makes you aware of when things happen. We want you to do that. Because I just found this out like two days ago, so Stop, that's why I'm also even... informing it. Okay. Don't yeah, so. Me. Zach, who do we have coming up on the podcast, though, on a serious note? Uh, what we got Ben and Dave with the IPAs. With the IPAs, which, yeah, that's true. So it's either going to be really awesome, or it could go historically bad, and it could uh, potentially get us canceled. But hey, we're going to take a shot in the dark, and we're just going to try it. Say but, fuck it. Tom for thank you, scientists is uh is something we have coming up as well. He's got a lot of uh, little uh, nuggets he's going to be sharing with everybody. Apparently, mm, maybe some live streaming. I'm not sure. We'll see. Maybe. Oh, well, maybe. Uh, Mike from SJC, the co-founder of SJC Custom Drums. That's if you are cool. a fan of The Prophet like I am, mm, for whatever for reason, sure. I don't know why. I love that show. As well as Clint from Galactic Empire, who was the guy that cr- cr- uh, created the intro for us. Thank you, Clint. So that's going to be a fucking rad episode as well. I mean, that dude's a graphic designing genius. Yep. That's why I hired him. And then Conquer Divide, we're having Kristen on as well. Oh, dude. They just released... A new song called Chemical, and it is fucking a Ooh, banger, I got to, dude. I got to listen after I get out of here. You have to get that. You have to get that into your ears. You have to feel it. Just feel I it. Have Just to, put oh, it in your ears. I have to feel it? You have to feel it. I guess right I have no choice. Feels. No, you're, you're, you're pretty much uh, going to get addicted to it. Uh, no, the man, first George, listen. have you gone to sleep in the past like seven days trying to book all these guests because... Every time I check our email, I, I get email notifications from midnight of one day all the way up until 11 o'clock in that night. So, like, just take a breather once in a while. That would be cool. But, no, we got so many people coming up that are really exciting, that are really excited to talk about a lot of things that they're doing as we're trying to get through this, uh, trying to hopefully move into a post-COVID world, uh, trying to transition and actually, like, uh, you know, do something <laughs> we need to do something productive we need to come together and talk about things that we're where you are in love with and things that we want to aspire to learn more and do as a full-time gig that's yeah. what we we're trying to accomplish um so if you guys are ready for those any of those guests make sure you subscribe like comment uh if you want to know or if you want to reach out for other guests who you want to see come on the show we are trying we're doing the best that we can to get as many guests on as possible and it's working so let's keep this train running thank you this is the Seafloor Cinema episode. Um, hope you enjoy. My dudes, thank you for coming back to the Limelight Podcast. I am joined here with my co-host, Zach Keeley, the one and only from Sacramento, California, the boys from the Seafloor Cinema. What's up, dudes? What's up? Yeah, What's kind of up? <laughs> We're all set up. You all look great. And um, I actually was just recently, you know, kind of looking up certain things about you guys and everything. 
uh, just like a couple quotes that uh, some people that in the industry that Zach and I have already talked to um, have said about uh, Sea Floor so. Cinema. And uh, <laughs> Zach from Strawberry Girls said he, you guys were quote nice unquote. How do you feel about that? Does that make you guys feel good? <laughs> yeah, I know. And then he also sexy ones. Sexy, really. Are there any other adjectives that he described to you guys, like, besides those two? Um, the boys in cardigans? We, yeah. we used to wear cardigans back then. <laughs> we, we actually, um, before I joined the band, uh, they used to play, like, barefoot. And then there's this... uh talk about this. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh yeah, there, there was this photographer that would always come to uh, the Seafloor Cinema shows, and uh, he'd be like, "You guys playing barefoot again?" <laughs> <laughs> it's just the vibe that you bring to the table. No, he's really cool. Like, cause we had him on the podcast recently, so we asked, you know, just to make sure that, uh, like, we wanted to make sure that the quote was said from him. He's like, "Yeah, I said that." So it's like, yeah, it, it's a big deal. <laughs> That's really funny. It's, man, actually. it's yeah. real investigative journalism with it. It was really intense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were trying to check our sources. You know what I mean? I don't know, but th- th- guys, thank you for taking the time to come in on and everything. You guys have been super busy too. I mean, congratulations on raising over twenty thousand dollars for your new album. That's incredible, man. Like, what did you, how'd you guys feel when that was brought together from the community? Yeah, yeah congratulations to us. <laughs> so funny. Thank you for your money, everybody. <laughs> Where did it go? Where did it go? Yeah. Um, in about a month, you're going to be wondering where we went. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to, are you, I know you guys are going to go to back to the studio for the full length album. Are you guys going back to Greg for this album from the previous uh, release that you guys had with a metaphor for honesty? So we actually already recorded it all. <laughs> yeah. In secret. Oh, hey now. So yeah, we we went with Courtney Ballard, who has done Water Parks, Five Seconds of Summer, State Champs, State Champs, Amorosa, and yeah, we were in LA the last month working with him on full length twelve songs. So yeah, it's actually we're, already done. We can't I'll, run off with the money. Album's yeah. already done. Yeah, we already <laughs> spent the money. So when does the album come out? Um, right now we're taking our, we're going day by day. We still have our second single that we recorded with Drew Owens to release. We've yet to record a music video for that, but, um, right now we're pretty much at the end phase of, uh, planning the music video and the release. Um, um, and as far as taking it day by day, you know, we're just, uh, sending people emails and trying to talk to people, um, and try to find the, the best team to help us release this album, uh. Because we've already spent a lot of money um, on making it, um, so we think it would be ideal for somebody, you know, who sees how much effort we put into it and then uh, backs us, uh, mm. you know, with advertising or uh, uh, distribution, things like that. You guys are definitely in the perfect place for that, too. I mean, the ball's in your court. Um, you guys have a well-rounded, you know, amount of plays on Spotify. And the fact is, like... You know, it was really cool when I um, started doing some research with um, where the music videos were released from. Jared Alonji actually put you guys on his channel. How did that relationship get built? Because honestly, I mean, he knows he has great taste in music, too. So putting you guys on the spot like that to share to his, you know, people, that's that's pretty fucking cool. By the way, you're sitting like a gargoyle there. And it, it's really <laughs> Doug's, Doug's uh, nickname is actually the Nargoyle. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, I was always a big fan of Jared's stuff back in like 2013 to 15 when he was making parody music <laughs> as his main thing. Mm. And then uh, one day when I was looking for uh, trying to find somebody to help release our music, uh, he had just changed the format of his channel to be like a, a collaborative artist type deal. And uh, he had a thing in the description that said, just submit your music or whatever you do. And uh, I'll maybe help you work on it if, if I like it. And I just did. And I forgot about it for like a week. And uh, and he was like, hey, uh, I want to work with you guys. And I was like, what? That's and badass. I, like, that guy who I you know used to watch when I was like 19. 
and uh, it's really cool. And you know, now I, you know, sometimes I help write his music, or he releases our stuff for us. He, you know, gives us advice and stuff. So it's really cool. It's like the best part of a label without the label. Yeah. And, and I do want to reiterate the point that, um, like, the best thing you could do is, um, like, uh, starting off as a band or a musician is just send emails to people because you really never know uh, who's going to be interested in helping you. You know. Mm hmm. Yeah, and you guys are in the right place too. I mean, the cool part about it is that um, you guys are so young, and there's still so much more to go, dude. Like, you guys have a couple albums out. You just released that single. Uh, um, that was in 2019. So, I mean, the honestly, the world's yours for the taking. And it's cool because a lot of underground musicians and bands, uh, they I'm sure they look up to you because it's really hard to get off of, uh, off the ground. In the very beginning of the early stages of being in a band you guys are only been doing this for like three four years so i mean what's next man like hopefully a label like is that the intention is to look into a label look into a pr company look into the whole package like yeah the main goal is to blow up <laughs> <laughs> you don't say oh, no, nobody. <laughs> no, the main goal is to be as big as possible but if, if you don't need need a label to get there like label wants to offer us a deal and it's a bad deal we'll just say no go away mm -hmm. and uh but if it's like for some reason they want to offer us like a really good deal i don't know if they would ever want to but if they did that might be something worth considering but uh it's still good to get our music in front of anybody who will listen to it on the off chance that somebody does want to give us a good deal but we're at that stage where like if it's a bad deal, we're not going to take it. Whereas a bands who are, you know, maybe a little more desperate or maybe have are a little bit newer, they'll take any deal they can get. We're mm -hmm. already working with what is essentially a record label minus all of the risk. So why would we take a bad deal? So it gives us the opportunity to pick any good deal that we want. We, we yeah, we do know a lot of contemporary artists. Um, you know, some of them that are our peers who will do anything to like stay DIY. And if anybody wants to, is like, can I get two percent of you know, like merch or this or that for um, distribution or anything like that. Even if it's like a very low entry contract, you know, there's some artists um, will just be like, what the fuck? You trying to take a piece of my pie, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and all that. And, and so it's, you know, we're kind of in between. Like we're not desperate for a deal, but we're also not, not going to take a deal. You know, we just right. want what's best for ourselves and the band and the music. No, yeah, that's overall, the best way of going about it. Yeah, overall, we're just trying to, like, connect with as many people as possible and, like, share our music with as many people as possible. And whatever helps us get there, we'll, we'll take that avenue. And I think Jared would be really sad if uh, we left Boketo Media for a really bad deal. But I think he'd understand if someone gave us a really good deal and we said, well, thanks for the help, Jared. Uh, but he would probably be pretty pissed off at me personally if we got signed <laughs> like, prize and only made 2% of our money that we were supposed to make. He'd be like, you guys are dumbasses and we're not friends anymore. And I'd say, you know what, Jared, I think I get that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, dude? I shot myself in the foot. It's okay. I think bands need to realize that. It's not because I remember like when we were kids and we wanted to be like signed to record labels, like, oh, like my favorite record label is Sumerian Records. I want to be signed to Sumerian or I want to be signed to Rise. And it's like, bro, like they can give you the shittiest deal. It's like, don't just do it because it's the label. You know what I mean? I mean, like maybe you guys signed with Victory. I don't think so. You know what I mean? Like, I think everybody yeah. wants to stay away from Victory Records, but it's like... Um... <laughs> well, that's crazy, dude, because I don't remember, like, hanging out as kids. <laughs> really? I never... It must have been somebody else, man. <laughs> Someone with, like, the same blue hair as you, dude. I don't know. Like, it's just... I'm having flashbacks, honestly. <laughs> right on the grade school <laughs> playground, dude. Like, your guys a songwriting uh who's the do you is it like a collaborative effort with everybody or is it mainly just one yeah, or two yeah. people? It, it kind of changes from song to song but um definitely do you guys try and like box yourself between like a specific sound or are you always just kind of just dealing with whatever flows we're just doing whatever sounds cool to us in the moment basically we're not super worried about cohesion with like this is the band sound and stuff like that and you'll realize that when the new album comes out that there's a lot of different variations of songs and songs that were written not for Seafloor that maybe one of us wrote individually and we're like, let's take that song and kind of make it our own. And it sounds pretty out there for Seafloor, but like that's that's how we write songs. So Yeah. The um the thing about it is 
uh, we had written about 30 to 40 songs between all of us um, before we had gone to L.A. to record um, 12 songs with Courtney. And we asked him to choose uh, what songs and help develop them uh, for what would be best for the album. Um, and they were pretty interesting choices. There were some songs where some of us didn't know, like didn't even think that they would be chosen. Some songs we thought would be chosen weren't chosen. Um, so it's a pretty good wide array of uh, new sounds that uh, we're exploring. So for the songs that did get chosen, are you going to keep the ones on the back end, like the back burner? Are you going to do any kind of special release with those, or are you just going to kind of keep them in your back pocket for later? Yeah, um, we just want labels um, and anybody else listening to know that we're ready to record like three albums. Just give us a budget. <laughs> <laughs> Let's impressive. go. We're putting that's, out that that's there. That's really impressive right off the bat. I mean, not many people can say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like without a second thought, we would be able to record like three albums next month. And it sounds like, and it sounds like some of the stuff that you have ready to go is stuff that you guys think sounds really, really awesome too. So that's really cool as well. Yeah, you know, a lot of the stuff is, like, stuff that we had finalized, but then was, like, guys, there's too many songs that sound like this. Let's stray away from that. And and certain, just stuff like that where Courtney gave us, like, suggestions for it and, like, kind of criticisms on certain songs. And we can, like, take note of that and kind of work those into those songs. But, yeah, overall, like, they're songs that are done and they're good and that were proud of them no i would be too is it is it uh do you guys take into consideration when you start writing that like it has to sound like an anime intro is that like <laughs> the go-to every like, week yeah every I, I do that every time yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, gotta bring the energy you know yeah no there's a lot of energy into it too i mean i could definitely see you guys being on audio tree within like the next like year or so yeah, i think that's be something that'd be vibe. tight because like the the progressive like math rock that you guys have there's not really many bands out there i mean we can name all the ones that have been moving around like tiny moving parts or covet or polyphia or chan but like it's th- that's still not a lot i feel like there's just it's just a handful of you guys and you're just so rare so i think they like, have another one on the audio tree i think would be pretty cool have you ever have you ever looked into those kind of outlets for live studio sessions at all yeah, we yeah we looked into that a while ago, and we have done a few of those before. That's true. Um, it yeah, it, like it does seem interesting. We'd have to really get on our A game for that sort of thing. Um, really bring like a killer sounding show. Mm-hmm. Um, right now we're not worried about shows or anything like that. We're yeah. you know, as Andreas says. Uh, more about the business side of things right now so we're mainly <laughs> worried about getting a, our own anime intro <laughs> let's <laughs> go dude hit us up and use our songs we're more than that uh, yeah. we're, that are, we're mass we're, following we're, people on uh, japanese twitter as we speak <laughs> check the record so like what do you have a uh, kind of like a plan or a timeline of what you get obviously covid's uh, a big stipulation with all of this but i mean We've talked to a lot of groups that have either used this time as a uh, kind of like a blessing in disguise in a way, like a silver lining. Uh, do you guys kind of have you used this time to kind of like shift gears into something that maybe you didn't have the time in the past to focus on? Uh, or are you guys kind of just going with the flow and just taking it, uh, taking advantage of it as you go? I think it uh, gave us the chance to make it better than it was going to be because we were already planning on uh, going to record this album like this. But it just gave us a lot of time to write three times more songs than we were planning on writing in the first place. Uh, Before, it was going to be like, we were going to write a bunch of songs and then go on tour across the country, basically, like all the way to New York. And then we were going to go record the album right after that. But this just, since there's no tour, it just gave us an extra month to write songs. And, you know, half of us lost our jobs, too. So we were able to just collect unemployment money and write a bunch of really good music uh, yeah so like you guys are having your a game though you know what i mean i mean what else more can you do like thank god you're not being like trapped or smash mouth and you're going out there and getting people sick (laughs) and fucking ruining the industry for us but like you guys are still doing a lot on the back end like you guys haven't been on this podcast but you've also been on other podcasts you guys have been doing you know a lot behind the scenes and the album's done so you know we had a lot of people yeah it's (laughs) 
It's really cool. Uh, we've actually recently done a lot of podcasts, and it's really cool to see like the bands that are on those podcasts before us. Like I think uh, What Sells Ahead has been on a few of the podcasts. Like it's like catching up to Gary Oak. Like we go and we look down at the the spot the Spotify podcast playlist, and it's like a marionette did it too. Um, what Sells Ahead did it too. Well, that's you know, and and it's awesome to see um, what podcasts people are into you know um and what kind of scenes are like uh permeating for people you know because um you ask somebody who likes this type of music and the type of bands are always different but it's so cool to see like um you know these bands getting hit up like a marionette and uh every time somebody asks us like who should we do next we're like fucking um you know like riley or something like that (laughs) and then they'll go on to (laughs) And, and it's so cool um, to see that and also find out about other bands. Um, there was a band recently called uh, Properties of Nature that had their own podcast. Um, and uh, actually yesterday uh, we got to play a game called Among Us um, between between us. And uh, it was really fun. And uh, hopefully in the future we'll be playing with Among Us, uh, Among Us with uh, Properties of Nature on like every podcast and stuff too. So it's... it's Really cool to see all these um, podcasts and just interest in uh, the music. Fuck you know? yeah, that's so cool. Um, I mean, are we a gym or are we in the Elite Four? Where are we at right now? Um, are I we think, like the fifth gym? <laughs> I think we're like the tower, you know, like <laughs> like the the tower of 100 battles. Where oh, have- right, yeah, in Johto. Yeah, you're trying to get to Ho-Oh yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah, because... Uh, like all these bands are like so legendary you know and i just think so highly of uh um you know a lot uh like all these bands um and it's just so awesome you know there's definitely a demand yeah you guys are right behind them so don't worry about it man like it's catching up soon i mean if jared likes your music dude you guys are set like it's humbling yeah we're um you know safe to say uh it some sort of uh it makes me very happy and i'm sure it makes everybody else very happy also, who's getting that tattoo again? Are you getting thick tattooed on your ass for the donation? Let's yeah. go, dude. <laughs> so they donated yeah. five hundred dollars. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Thick. How many C's? Three. Was it three? Was it three? I, I think it was two. Uh, yeah, I think it was two. Well, first, first off, before we even move further. Three is like the minimum amount of seeds you have to have in thick. I expect that if you're going to get people donating money, <laughs> you know, at least five C's. This is unacceptable. It carries over to the other cheek. <laughs> Yo, honestly, I think we're I think we're getting with something. If it goes to the other, other cheek, that just shows commitment. <laughs> just now. yeah, um, yeah. It's going to be. Um, if there was actually a third one, I think I would run out of room on both cheeks. So. <laughs> oh. No asking. What's up? <laughs> oh my god. Sorry guys. Do you, you, you're, you guys like talk to your fans all the time and stuff too, like on a daily basis. Um, so it's one tattoo that you're getting. Two. Two tattoos. They're a band from Sacramento. They're, yeah, they're they awesome. have their logo on Anthony's ass, and then. Some other guy, I forget what it was. He hasn't told us yet. Yeah, we um, we're still getting uh, questionnaires back so that we can fulfill the orders. <laughs> that's so fucking cool, dude. That's actually that's actually genius. And they were like, I mean, it probably happened right off the bat. They probably saw that in the rules. They're like, all right, five hundred dollars. Yeah, shout out to Michael Franzino. So what it was like right off the bat, like when you um, when you went for the uh, the GoFundMe page, like. Did somebody like un- like initially donate that five hundred dollars like right off the bat? They're like, oh, this is so cool. I want to do this. Like first four days, yeah. First yeah, four it's days. Lonely Avenue. Like within the week of that, we're like, dope, dude. Thanks, <laughs> man. <laughs> That's so dope. Man, I was I was tempted to donate five hundred dollars of my own money to to get something incredulous on his ass yeah <laughs> like you know if somebody wants like some like really ridiculous stuff i'm gonna be like let's talk about this you know, <laughs> let's, this, let's this is my ass you know like this I'm, is my ass it, like it's not gonna be like a huge like fuck or something like that like it's <laughs> <Why not? laughs> that cool. funny though <laughs> it'll be a tattoo of your ass on your ass but a little bit bigger yeah like it's it's <laughs> not gonna like if some like 
<laughs> like wants to disrespect me for something. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's a tough call, but. That's fucking dedication, man. I mean, and that's another thing, too. So you guys are, like, really going out of your way um, to, you know, really get this album support. But that that's that's really cool in general. Um, <laughs> is he all right? Did you just get knocked? Yeah, he's good. <laughs> yeah, they abuse me all the time. I'm going to assume you didn't immediately come to the decision of $500 equals a tattoo on Anthony's ass. So was there any other... Uh, Ideas that were thrown out there of <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. I think at first we said three hundred, and he's like, "Listen, guys, it's my ass. <laughs> Prime real estate, five hundred dollars. We have a tattoo gun at free, so it's pure profit. Yeah, <laughs> pure profit. That is true. And you guys have done a lot of things that local bands haven't really um, gotten a chance to do as well. I mean, you guys are were highly active within the emo night scene like that's really fucking cool did you guys play originals while you played covers during those sets in la yes we play usually two originals uh if they're feeling it kind of thing so we we kind of just throw as many as possible yeah, but- did where like uh i would sometimes i would break a string and then I'd look over at Justin and I'd say, "No originals tonight." <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's usually like divine intervention at that point, saying, "Tonight's not the night, guys." <laughs> yeah, tonight's not the night. Yeah, yeah. And really, that's with like tw- you know twenty songs overall. It's uh, yeah. You can always tell when the crowd is feeling an original. Or yeah, two. yeah. Yeah. The best one we had was when uh, the last. No, actually, second to last song in the set, and my bass, this is when I was playing bass, my input jack disappeared into my bass, and my cable just fell on the ground, so I had no bass anymore, and I didn't have a backup, and then I threw my bass off and started singing, and then I looked over at Doug, and Doug just had broken strings. (laughs) Both of us were like, I don't know what to do. So we just played that last song. We finished that last song. We're like, all right, thanks, bye. And that was it. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's been all sorts of unspeakable disasters that's happened during emo nights. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. It's always it's time. Uh, but that's that's the thing is um like that's been such great practice for us. That's also another thing we'd like people to know is uh <laughs> we can play in front of 700 people with all the issues in the world and still get the show done. <laughs> you know what up. Uh, what covers were you doing? Uh, we were doing Mr. Brightside, uh, The Anthem, you know, Ooh. Fall Out Boy, Paramore, Panic at the Disco, Three Days, or not Three Days, Space, uh, 30, 30 Seconds to Mars, uh, shout outs to uh, Camp Mars. Um, <laughs> uh, what else did we do? Ah, fuck. We've done Kohi, Move Dug to Self before, Move Along was always a staple. Um, uh, great Escape. We, yeah, Great Escape. Um, uh, you got the radio, I don't know the radio. Uh, taking back cute without the E. Yeah, cute, cute without the E, and also the other one by them, Make Damn Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Ocean Avenue, just like any of those songs that everybody knows the words All to, bops. because we've seen other bands emo night, and they'll play like songs, and it's like, why the fuck are you playing that one? <laughs> like, nobody's singing, and nobody's having fun, and you're just jerking off on the crowd. Like, <laughs> uh, but like. We, we, we play the fun ones, you know? The emo bops. There's there's so many emo bops out there, dude, that gets those crowds going. I mean, like, honestly, like, that's, like, something that I haven't been to. I haven't been to an emo night. I think the only one that we had on the East Coast was Brooklyn. I'm, I'm probably wrong. But uh, I heard they're, they're fucking good times. I actually yeah. have this theory that, like, Kevin Lyman might be working yeah. with the emo night crew to reamp Warped. But, like, not, like, Warped Tour, but, like, something different, I feel like. I don't dude, know. Dude, that stuff would pop off. I don't know. How 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 big was the cap space when you guys played Emo Night? Probably like over 700 people? The biggest, like, uh, the biggest was, I think, 700, but the average was like 500. And uh, before the shutdown, we were going to play a 1200 cap venue, House of Blues in Vegas. And then that didn't happen. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we were going to go on a national tour. Um, we were playing big Emo Nights in between all the way to like New Jersey, New York and all that. And uh, little shows in between, um, you know, to fill out the days. Our hmm. own shows. Yeah, hmm. with our own shows. Um, 
so that you know we'd make money and play our own shows, mm-hmm. make money, play our own shows. Mm-hmm. But um, COVID got in the way, but yeah. that's okay. You go yeah. fucking bops. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're writing bops, and then you're, the album's already done. Twenty thousand dollars has been spent. Have you guys reached the East Coast at all? Like, have you gone from California to the East Coast and back? Like, has you reached majority of the United States while touring? Never. Not, we were, not physically. Yeah, we were supposed to uh, this year, supposed to go to New York, but before the furthest we had gone was like Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. <laughs> that's that's a really sad <laughs> accolade. Don't I've gone to Oklahoma City. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we only got halfway there. Don't go to New York, though. Come to Philadelphia. Philadelphia's a lot better than yeah, New York. Yeah, come to Philly. Philly's where all the cool kids are. Yeah. We had, like, three Philadelphia dates planned. Like, we were just going to do three dates in a row in Philadelphia. It was Fuck. Really funny. I'm sure one was at the fire, right? Yeah, I think so. I think that was one yeah. of them. There was also this dude who, like, he was in an easy core band, and, uh... Uh, with sales ahead, like pointed me uh, to him, and he like hijacked this this group chat I was in with two other bands, and was like, "That venue sucks. You guys are dumb. Book this venue instead." And the DIY people were like, "Who the fuck is this Easy Core guy trying to hijack the show?" And it got really awkward, so I just uh, stopped responding to that chat and booked a different show. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta watch yeah, out for those leeches, man. Unfortunately, just want to suck you dry, dude. <laughs> Like, they're fucking trying to get your show. Like, oh, come to my show, man. I'll book you a real good one. And it's like in his backyard. With it on <laughs> Dude, it's not usually like this, bro. It's usually a lot more chill. Yeah. Usually when people come out. <laughs> New York is just so hard to get around, dude. Like, a lot of my friends who would tour, I let them stay at the crib. And they would just, like, they would just be so upset to go to New York because they have to, like, literally just go through tight crevices and then at the same time, like, it's just so awkward for them to be there. And, 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 and staying in New York is, is not easy. So they always try to come up to the suburbs of Philadelphia and they just usually chill here. So if you guys need a place to stay, you, you're more than welcome to crash. So hopefully. Well, we've got to go to your house soon. Yeah. Pretty soon. <laughs> I know. I mean, I'm going to be in Philly next month. Oh, wow. Yeah, what? <laughs> He's going on a road trip. I'm, I'm visiting places. I don't know where in Philly, but. Yeah. Oh, let us know if you come down. We'll, uh, we'll have to meet up then. Do a real Hell podcast. Yeah, I mean, we've just done that. Where, where yeah. are you guys? Actually, I'll, I'll text you about that separately. <laughs> I don't want to give a whole lot away. Yeah, let's give exact information of where we're going to be, exact timelines, addresses. Let's do it. Yeah. Also, can you can you give me your socials real quick? What? No. <laughs> and your credit card info, please. Yeah, yeah. Credit card info, social security, license registration. Uh, how was the How was the recording process with? Uh, this album that is not going to be released anytime soon. Um, how, was it like a month long process? <laughs> hey. Tell me, um, Doug recently found out that he's got a secret sister. He took a DNA <laughs> test. <laughs> <laughs> this is really important. Doug <laughs> took a DNA test and found out. I have a secret half sister who was born in 1988, and uh, she's really nice, and that's. That's how the recording process went. It was really good. Dude, wow. she's, really <laughs> she's probably so proud of you, Doug. <laughs> yeah, she, so she found out she was my sister and then supported the Kickstarter the same day. It was really cool. Dude. Really? Yeah. Honestly. And then also we manifested Seth. Uh, we played uh, WWE uh, 2K19 and uh, pressed random on customer creation. <laughs> custom, <laughs> custom, <laughs> custom character creation. Oh my god. <laughs> and to actually answer the question, uh, we're all custom characters. chair, and you lean back a little too far, and you get that sense of you're gonna fall over, but then you don't fall over. <laughs> Yeah, the recording process was a lot like that. It was like <laughs> sitting down and standing up really fast, but over and over. <laughs> so you were lightheaded the entire time. Oh my god! You were really lightheaded. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, California is notorious for earthquakes, so that was probably the reasoning being. <laughs> oh, you know what? Um, there was an earthquake. So, in order to stop it, Steve-O uh, taped himself to a billboard. <laughs> yeah, that's, that happened. That's exactly yeah. right. Wow, that's heroic. Yeah, Steve-O is so brave. Heroism. That's literally what I... When he did that, I started knocking on people's doors, and I would be like, have you ever uh, heard about our Lord and Savior, uh, Steve-O? 
Yeah. We, was, we were there for that. That was like down the street from the studio. No way! <laughs> it was like walking distance from where we were. That's too funny. You probably see a lot of famous people in LA. I have, dude, there's so many people I know that are in LA and I've never been out to California. Do you guys see like random people that you're like, oh my God, that's fucking Brad Pitt or fucking, oh, that's uh, Gary Busey. And it's like, oh, God. David Dobrik. <laughs> David Dobrik. Um, I feel like if we did see a famous person, instead of being like, oh my God, we'd be like, let's get him. And then jump on <laughs> Let's get him and put him in this bag. And the Seafloor Cinema just beat da- uh, fucking Brad Pitt's ass and stole his wallet. Oh my god. And they put a tattoo and it says thick on it and they said it was for $500. <laughs> Mostly just saw cockroaches. That was, a, that was the most famous thing. There was a pretty cool few couple of cockroaches. Yeah. Oh, damn. They were pretty tight. They were LA cockroaches. They had like oh. bandanas and knives. <laughs> <laughs> they tried to steal your wallet. They would like oh my make a beeline to bad it. roaches. Yeah, those bad roaches. I think they were trained roaches actually. They probably had like uh, black belts in taekwondo or some kind of jujitsu. Like feel <laughs> like. Yeah, there was, there was one roach that we like thought was the dad. We called him Papa Roach. <laughs> <laughs> This is, yeah, this is not. This is not well. <laughs> By chance, are you a father? <laughs> yeah, are you the dad of the group? <laughs> oh man, I'm so excited for you guys. Um, is that single that you guys recently released going to be on the album as well, or is that just going to stay separate for what you're planning on releasing? I think it's just going to be a one-off thing, mm-hmm. as well as the next single that we recorded. We were just going to have it be like just two songs for fun that we uh, we all played on, and then. Uh, Drummer got eaten by sharks, so <laughs> so it's not. God damn it! That. But then you know, uh, Tim, the new drummer, played drums on all these new songs. So this uh, this next single will probably be the last thing that uh, our old drummer played on, mm-hmm. and uh, it was a really cool experiment because we all just said like we're just gonna write a crazy song. Everyone's gonna write their own parts, and uh, we're just gonna just do it, just make a really good song. And then we did, and they came out really well. And then the album was just a different experiment in writing. Songs that are actually catchy. That was the mission there. <laughs> yeah. No, that's always it's always the structure that always got me when I'm writing certain songs. Um, did you get did you reach out for any features that we might know of? We're still we're still talking to people about that. But Ooh, yeah, yeah, we'll we'll have a, an answer at some point. There are some there are people you will know though. I think yeah. pretty much everybody you'll know. Uh but they haven't said yes yet, and I don't know if they'd want us to say their name if they haven't said yes. But mm-hmm. uh, some pretty crazy names, bro. Let's Papa go. Roach. <laughs> Papa Roach. <laughs> Papa Roach. <laughs> Yo, I heard you met Papa Roach in LA. <laughs> in hey, I met him at Sport Authority once. <laughs> okay. Red Red place. Field, but Harry Seinfeld. <laughs> Seinfeld. <laughs> We have Godfrey. Oh God, that would be a nightmare. In Aladdin. <laughs> but he raps it. But he raps it. Yeah, you guys have a break in the song, and he just starts rapping it. With you guys releasing the album uh, between now and possibly next year, um. What what other things that we can expect from you guys uh, moving forward with content wise? Like, are you gonna be reaching out for? Because I know, and and you've been doing uh, guitar playthroughs and stuff. So, um, can we expect any more of that? What can we like really expect from you guys? Like uh, before the album's released, a lot of memes, uh, <laughs> guitar, bass, drum playthroughs, um, just different video content, the studio videos, music videos, stuff like that, drama. Explosions, mystery, mystique, something random, something really crazy. We're going to have three rings, full three ring circus. We're going to bring it. We're going to have playthroughs. We're going to have fire dancers. So your band is essentially just getting completely sexualized because that's how I'm feeling about this. If we get the budget, we'll make you a hit. (laughs) Give me the stars. Give me the stars. I will make you. I'll own the box office. Okay. <laughs> some really cool music videos, a cult, maybe some some things that go that go along with cult stuff. You know, robes. 
<laughs> ropes. <laughs> Dude, this is all set up. I'm, I'm like writing this down as we speak. Also, I mean, this needs to be an anime show. Like, somebody needs to create this right now, right now, dude. Like, all you do yeah. in this in Seafloor in an anime. Like, let's go. My name's Anthony on fire, and I'm late for my first day at Seafloor school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you guys so much, dude. I well, first of all, I mean, congratulations. I'm glad the album has been finally completed, and that it's going to be uh, hopefully in our hands in the year soon. So, um, I just wish you guys the best and stay safe out there. Um, Before you go, <laughs> go ahead. No. Um, let me hit you with an exclusive. Uh, one of our new songs, you know what I mean? Oh, a teaser? A teaser? Yeah, a teaser. Yeah, well, let's go, oh, yes. dude. I love being teased. Oh, what? You didn't he's, hear me say he's, that. Him, his, him smiling makes it seem like it could be something <laughs> crazy. Here you go. I'll play you a second of it. This is the the, the intro. I didn't hear anything. We don't hear anything. (laughs) Oh, and I can't hear you, bud. (laughs) He definitely muted us. (laughs) I know he did. That's why they're laughing. So basically, Justin's exploring his lower range. (laughs) Hopefully, you guys heard that. Oh, I heard every single (laughs) thing. Every single little part, dude. Honestly, like, I'm surprised you put breakdowns in this song. Like, you guys are going to a, a metalcore route, dude. Like, you're changing it up. Yeah, Seth, Seth has been really crazy. But when Seth tried out for the band, he brought more pedals than Justin, Doug, and I owned. He brought, like, a spaceship full of, like, three pedal boards, and he was like, can I play bass? And we were like, yeah, you could have. <laughs> Seth, you're... Just come along for the ride, man. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, and Sam is just fucking dopeness. <laughs> it's fucking <laughs> sick. <laughs> uh, dude, we're ready for it, man. We're ready for it so much. But I really appreciate you guys taking the time and doing this. Um, we'll have all the links in the below to follow them on social media and to get hardcore memed at. Um, these guys are going to be your next favorite band within the next like, you know, year or so. It's going to be happening. So. I can see it. So, gentlemen, it was a pleasure. <laughs> also, we're gonna get more quotes from Zach from uh, Strawberry Girls. We're gonna have to see if we can get more adjectives describing your band. Yeah, can I explain that real quick? Can I explain that quote that's actually real? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I recorded our first song, Swords Dance. I was looking for anybody to listen to it, and uh, I was like, "Oh, Zach Garen, dude, I'll tell him to listen to it." And I tweeted him. And he said, I'm busy, tweet me on Monday. And I said, what the fuck? <laughs> and then I remember, I tweeted him on Monday, and I said, please listen to my song. And he, he just responded, nice. And I said, what's <laughs> cool? So what's going on the Facebook and the website? So thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Screenshot just, it. Put it in a put it in on a, 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 a picture frame and just like hang it on your wall. Like, that's all you need, dude. That's, exactly. Nice. Yeah, that's, 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 that's all you need. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Stay safe out there, and uh, we're looking forward to this album. Yep, we'll leave you with this. Yeah. Yeah. C4 Cinema, everybody.